You know you need a sales team, but the idea of building one from the ground up seems like an impossible task. Here's how to get started without ending up feeling overwhelmed. Many of our clients have asked us like, who do I hire first? Do I hire a salesperson right away? Where do I begin with this? Do I hire someone to just set appointments? So there's a lot of confusion about how to grow a sales team. Here's the thing. Remember that your sales team starts with your first hire and sometimes that's you <laughs> and that's okay. One of the things that one of the most important things you can do is learn how to sell. It's the reason I once had a company called sales coach now because our clients needed to know how to sell business owners, entrepreneurs need to know how to sell. And this, you know, this is often overlooked. I think when people launch businesses because they have a certain skill set, they have a certain thing that they're really good at doing, but maybe they don't know how to sell and that's okay. The truth is we don't learn how to sell in kindergarten. We don't learn how to sell in elementary school. We don't learn how to sell in high school and you can get an MBA at most schools and not have one course on selling. Now, some of you are arguing with me in your head right now. You're like, that's not true. There's a lot of, there's a lot of classes at universities that are, you know, marketing and sales kind of mostly marketing. They gloss over the sales part, but there are very few universities. In fact, I can count a couple on my hands that have a, have a course just in sales or have a major just in selling. And so, what that, what you realize is that that's just, it's not taught. In fact, selling in most parts of the world, in most parts of the world is kind of villainized, right? Like if you're a salesperson, people look down on that. It's not really a career. It's just something you ended up doing. <laughs> I remember people used to say that to me because I had a degree in liberal arts and I was, I had gotten an outside sales position. They're like, Hey, you're not really using your, not really using your degree. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I use my degree every single day. Every single day, psychology matters in a sales conversation. Every single day, my communication skills matter in a sales conversation. I just didn't know what it was preparing me for. What would have been extra helpful though, is if I would have had an actual course on sales and selling. And so, so I, I invite you to not beat yourself up. If you don't know how to sell, and even if you've read some books on selling and it still, it still feels unnatural, I totally get it. But I do want to encourage you to learn how to sell because when you know how to sell your own product or service, it's so much easier to train someone else when you hire them. Like if you don't know how to sell and you're relying on someone else to come in and sell your product or service, even if they're an experienced salesperson, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And so, so let's simplify what selling is. Selling is simply solving a problem or meeting a need. You do it all day long in your business, right? You're, you're already, if you're in business and you don't have a sales team yet, you're the top salesperson. You're the one who is helping people make a decision, or you're the one that's handling the marketing and the sales online, whatever it is, but you are it. And so congratulate yourselves. You are right. You are already a salesperson. Maybe you're not as great of a salesperson as you'd like to be yet, but how could you be? right? Again, selling isn't something that we're taught along the way. Selling is something that we learn. Selling is a skill. <laughs> Think about this. Think about your CPA, right? Imagine if your CPA got a liberal arts degree and then, you know, didn't have any additional training on sales and decided that they were going to figure out how to be a CPA. Maybe they could pass the exam, maybe not, but that's not what they do, right? They're trained. They get the skill set that they need. There's no shame in like having to take courses on being a CPA and taking an exam. It's the same in selling. There's no shame in taking places. There's no shame in taking classes on sales or selling. That's how you learn. It's a skill set. So again, give yourself some grace. You don't know how to sell. That's okay. You can learn how to sell. It's very simple. As I said, you start to solve problems and meet needs. Many of our clients detest the word selling. They don't want to be perceived as being a salesperson. I think that's an epidemic in our country. And one of the things actually that's an epidemic in the world. And one of the things we do with our clients is help them identify their limiting belief about selling. What are they really, what are they really afraid of? Right. Or what are they, what are they really concerned about when it comes to selling? And again, most of the time their belief is that they don't want to be perceived as being a pushy salesperson. And then I ask them, I'll say, well, what's not true about you being a pushy salesperson? And they'll say, Hmm, well, 
I'm, I'm very thoughtful in the sales process, or I really care about my customers or my clients, or I'm really there to solve their problem, or I've already solved the problems of you know, hundreds and hundreds of other, um, other prospects that we've had who have become clients. And so what they start to realize is that limiting belief about selling starts to fall away, and they start to see that it's not about them. I remember a, a mentor saying to me, you know, Ursula, you can be afraid of the sales process, you can be resistant in the sales process, or you could remember that selling and speaking on stages or whatever you're afraid of, he was saying this to me, it's not about you. It's about the people you're here to serve. So when you can get over you being afraid and just do it, you'll start to serve at the highest level. Now it was kind of harsh. It was like, what do you mean? It's not about me. It's all about me. I'm the one that has to make the phone call. I'm the one who has to stand on the stage, but I got his point. It's not about me. It's not about you either, right? So all the stories you made up about selling or all the things you're afraid of when it comes to rejection and you know, just feeling uncomfortable in the sales process, what if you didn't care? What if you're like, yeah, whatever anyone does, that's, that's about them, that's not about me. I'm here, I'm here to help those people who want my help through my product or service. I'm here to serve. Like when you come from that place, the fear starts to fall away. And then you become your number one salesperson. And then when it's time to hire a salesperson, you take everything that you've learned, you take all of your achieving beliefs about selling, you take all of your confidence in solving problems and meeting needs and you train your first hire. That's what works, right? And when you train someone from that place, they're gonna be successful in sales as well. Now there's a few other tips I'm going to share with you on how to lead your sales team, but first you have to be in that mindset and then when you hire someone, you want to give them that confidence and mindset as well. So before you hire someone, begin to document all of your best sales practices and the, current, and the current sales system that you're using. Because believe it or not, you do have a sales system. You have a sales system of, that you follow from when a prospect shows up to when they buy your product or service. That's your current sales system. Documenting it is a great way to see what you're current, currently doing and maybe even what you could shift or change. So documenting is a powerful thing that that you can do no matter what to make your sales system work even better. And once you have it documented, it's much easier for you to train someone. Then when you hire someone, you can begin to train them on your best practices and you can explain what works. And if they're bringing experience in, great, they can probably make your process even better, but you at least already have a documented sales process that they can confidently follow. Now, once they're on board, you wanna have two mandatory meetings. One, a weekly sales meeting, that's an hour where it's like big picture. And this is especially true when you have more than one salesperson, right? You have a sales meeting where you all come together, maybe someone shares a best sales practice that week and then everybody takes a turn talking about the sales that are in their pipeline, what they're going to close and their closed sales, okay? So that's, you have them present that to the team. From there, you wanna have a weekly one-on-one -on -one meeting. And this could just be a 15 to 20 minute check-in with each salesperson to talk about how they're doing, like what are they celebrating and what are their challenges? And then whatever those challenges are, how can you as the owner or the sales manager really help them? So once a week, mandatory sales meeting, once a week, mandatory one-on-one -on -one meeting. Now notice I said mandatory. And this is my pro tip for you. My pro tip is that the word mandatory means mandatory. And I see this fall apart at companies all the time. They'll say it's a mandatory sales meeting and yet they allow salespeople to schedule meetings over it. And the salesperson will be like, well, it's a client meeting. And somehow that's okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. Because top salespeople, they are the directors of their sales process. They are confident in when they schedule the appointments and they don't tell the client it's okay. Oh yeah, we can totally book this appointment over my mandatory sales meeting. No, that's not acceptable. So mandatory means, and you wanna make this really clear with your sales team, that there are no other appointments that are going to happen during that time. They must be present at that meeting and they must be present at the one-on-one -on -one time, unless there's an emergency. But other than that, you know, maybe you schedule the sales meeting on a Monday morning so people you know that they're coming on a Monday morning, they can prepare for the week, and most people don't schedule appointments Monday morning, right? They don't schedule client appointments Monday morning. So we, we're pretty much guaranteed that that time is going to be available and they're not scheduling over it. So today we talked about how to build a sales team from the ground up and what it's really going to take. 
And I want to remind you that you are your number one salesperson. So it's important for you to get the sales training that you need. So when you do hire someone and you've documented and you've documented your best sales practices and your current sales system, you can easily train them on that practice. Plus, Remember to have a weekly sales meeting and a weekly one-on-one -on -one meeting with your sales team members. And these meetings are mandatory, which means no other appointments can be booked over them. By following those practices, you can grow a successful sales team too. If you enjoyed today's video, stick with me because up next, we're gonna talk about the different sales strategies. And remember, your 2X is waiting for you too.